what happened yesterday night, uh, the captain started to feel something in the propellers and he believed that was a large net. And so today we stopped, stopped the motor and one of the guys, uh, Blackwood, went underwater and, and found a net, a uh, big massive net. So we had to cut it and we retrieve it uh, on board. We have come through this area before, a couple of years ago, two years ago, and the same thing happened. We drove over a big net and we caught that in our propeller. And we had, again, the same thing. These fishing nets I, I see a, as a huge problem, not only for uh, marine mammals, but vessels, ships. Um, it's a hazard to navigation. It's a hazard for uh, shipping. Anyone that's worked on a boat for long enough will probably encounter nets or lines wrapped around the screws. Doesn't matter what kind of boat, fishing boats, research boats, yachts. I've had to cut out lines from four or five different boats. Fishing gear is a pretty is a pretty large portion of what we find out in the in the garbage patch. Some of our research suggests that it's about 80% of the composition of the, the plastics that we find out here, mostly in the form of nets and big sort of tangles of nets. Um, that have just kind of accumulated over time, uh, but also buoys and other hard plastics like uh, big fishing crates and um, other gear that's used by fishermen out here. You know, in some way I'm kind of glad we got to experience it because we quite often talk about the environmental risk of uh, derelict fishing gear but it also is a problem for maritime traffic and you know, it's an economic problem because there are quite some boats uh, that get um, their propellers tangled with, with large nets. 